fundamentals that lead to being here, which is that only about 1% of philanthropic money goes into climate finance right, right now, and 2% uh, of institutional money. And uh, the idea of bringing uh, all of us together, uh, which is what we've done this morning, to discuss how we can better serve the world through climate finance uh, is something which we are appreciative for, for convening power and having us uh, do this. Uh, and I know, sir, that your many decades, many decades of telling and warning the world about this fundamental uh, problem uh, upcoming uh, have been inspirational and it's not until more recent years that people have started to gather around uh, Paris and understand the meaning uh, from that. And uh, to you, Mr. President, Mr. President, this group, thank you, first of all, for arranging for us to be able to be here and brief you today. And I know everybody is looking forward to being able to share some thoughts with you this morning. But the bottom line is that the folks who are here, who come together, represent a remarkable long period of time they've been committed to this issue. They represent some of the most powerful, successful financial institutions in the world. And some of them represent some of the best philanthropy in the world. And so there's a full understanding here, particularly with the evidence of the last few weeks piling on, that when scientists are telling us that they are terrified by what they're seeing, and when we hear those same scientists telling us that we are in uncharted territory, this group has come together to try to figure out, OK, how do we deploy the funds necessary to invest to create the new clean energy economy? Greetings, friends. More checks will be on the way. In just three days, direct deposits will be made to millions of Americans. And these payments will be worth over $2,000 for many. Lawmakers in both the House and Senate are pushing for the expansion of monthly benefits. Check payouts may be equal to twice as much if this bill is approved. My dear friends, please make sure to watch until the end of this video for the latest details. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway this coming Friday. If you'd like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, simply click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My dearest friends, the more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances of winning the weekly giveaways. According to the schedule provided by the SSA, retirees across the United States can anticipate receiving their July Social Security payments, which can amount to a maximum of $4,555 in approximately three days. But one of the big questions that many are asking right now is whether benefits should be expanded. The Social Security Expansion Act has been formally reintroduced to Congress by Senator Bernie Sanders. But this time around, he received a lot more backing from his congressional colleagues. The Social Security Expansion Act was initially presented on June 9th by Senator Bernie Sanders and Democratic Representative Peter DeFazio. The plan would add $200 to each monthly check for Social Security recipients who are now receiving benefits or who will reach 62 years old in 2023. If this plan is passed, Social Security beneficiaries may receive an additional $2,400 in payments every year. The plan would add $200 to each monthly check for all Social Security recipients who are now receiving benefits or who will reach 62 years old in 2023. Senator Bernie Sanders and a new coalition of backers, which includes co-signers Senator Elizabeth Warren, and Representatives Jan Schachowski and Val Hoyle have reignited interest in this legislation. This comes amid proposed cuts to Social Security as the United States faces its most recent debt ceiling crisis. This is despite the fact 
that the measure's initial June 9th introduction has remained dormant. So by taxing the nation's richest incomes, the most recent version of the law ensures that future generations will continue to receive benefits through the year 2096, despite the program's chronic lack of funding. According to an official statement from Senator Bernie Sanders' office, this will be accomplished without raising taxes by a single penny for over 93% of American households that make $250,000 or less. The legislation, as written, would have applied to this increase to individuals who receive retirement, disability, and survivor benefits but not those who receive supplemental security income. Mary Johnson, the Senior Citizens League, Social Security, and Medicare policy analyst said that SSI is a needs-based program for people with limited income and resources. The Social Security Expansion Act was referred to various committees in the House and Senate for discussion, which is a first step in the legislative process. The legislation comes on the heels of the Social Security Administration's most recent report on the health of the Old Age and Survivors Insurance and Disability Insurance Trust Fund, which is now expected to run out of money by 2033. Well, that is one year later than last year's projections indicated. Social Security benefits will drop by 23% in the year 2035 if no action is taken to replenish the trust fund before then. According to experts, by raising taxes on people making over $250,000 a year, the bill would extend the lifespan of Social Security for another 75 years. Currently, any earnings above $147,000 are exempt from Social Security payroll taxes. The bill would lift this cap and subject any income above $250,000, including capital gains, to Social Security payroll taxes. The bill's sponsors say 93% of U.S. households would not see their taxes increase as a result of this provision. Under the Social Security Expansion Act, annual cost of living adjustments would no longer be calculated based on the Consumer Price Index for urban wage earners and clerical workers. Instead, the bill would adopt a consumer price index for the elderly, which sponsors say would accurately measure the spending patterns of senior citizens and result in a more fair COLA. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on all of this? Do you agree with the Social Security Expansion Act? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Well, my beautiful and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video. My dearest friends, thank you so very much for joining me here and for being part of this. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, my friends, I will be announcing winners every Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter these weekly giveaway, friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, my friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways.